For example, channel separation of 100 GHz was sufficient to reduce cross phase modulation effects of a system with 5 mW of power per channel. So, this is just a typical example of cross phase modulation uh, aware system design. So, system impact of cross phase modulation is also, uh, we say, XPM penalty actually decreases for high channel bit rates. This can be a uh, uh, lower bit rate signal expense, longer bit interactions, or walk off, walk through. Walk through means, as I said, this uh, signal path and the neighbor signal path can interact uh, if the, those pulses uh, along, uh, propagate along with so or long time. The interaction will uh, so frequently. But if the signal speed is so different, and uh, the interaction time is so short, the impact of the cross phase modulation is reduced. Okay, so uh, this is the same one. And the dispersion penalty is due to cross phase may also be controlled by the implementation of dispersion compensation. This is the same thing, as I said. Uh, dispersion compensation is, is effective in the optical transmission systems. Or fiber effect area could be increased or decreased nonlinear refract index or also reduce the cross phase modulation penalty. Or uh, this is also the same thing that simply reduce the power of launch the channel power will decrease the nonlinear effect. Okay. Uh, okay. Who will the next thing? Okay, so uh, we will continue the four-wheel mixing and stop for lunch time. Okay. The last one is four-wave mixing. Four-wave mixing means uh, uh, the four wave uh, interacted in this uh, phenomena. That means uh, a, f, uh, any frequency light one, two, three, and generated as a fourth area, one, two, three, four. So we say four-wave mixing. This is the interaction of two or three optical waves at a different wavelengths generates new optical waves. For example, this is a generic case of figure. One, two, three generates uh, many, many children of the children, such small children. This is the four wave mix. Okay? And uh, sometimes it's called the four photon mixing. And the problematic thing is in this case, you will space the WDM channels with equal spacing, okay? So three signal channel. But if four wave mixing arise, arise in this uh, WDM signal channels, you will see uh, such a small baby of this interaction. And this small uh, four wave mixing light will be uh, just coincide with the other signal channel. This could be a crosstalk and the impairment for the other signal channels. Uh, this is a bit difficult <laughs> uh, description, maybe, yeah, but uh, anyway, four-wave mixing, how to generate four-wave mixing lights. Uh, four-wave mixing lights uh, will be affected by the dispersion value, power, or something like that. And this is a, this equation for light wave generated by four wave mixing. Four wave mixing, delta beta uh, means this uh, group velocity dispersion or amount of dispersion. And this efficiency of four wave mixing is also affected by dispersion, uh, channel spacing, and the power. As you can see, that a power increase, four wave mixing is increased. And the dispersion increase, four wave mixing will decrease. And the channel spacing increase, four wave mixing will decrease. So you can see that uh, we can manipulate such parameters in a system design to reduce the four wave mixing generation. Uh, so we call this uh, the phase matching of uh, phase matching condition of the four wave mixing lights. Uh, this is a phasor diagram of four-wave mixing. So this 
エクスポネンシャル GJ デルタベータ L-1 を、uh, J デルタベータ is described as such a circle And the four, this is a four m i x i n g light. So you can see as、uh, distance L increase, this point will propagate on this circle. This means, and this is the electrical field. And the、uh, intensity of light will from zero to maximum to zero to max repeated. And you can see this expression will generate just a sine wave or cosine wave equation. So, the power will change, so sine wave or cosine wave like change in the power. Okay? So,、uh, how to reduce the whole wave mixing? So, chromatic dispersion, larger chromatic dispersion value suppresses the generation of whole wave mixing lines. So, non zero dispersion shifted fiber, G65 fiber, Will be effective for、uh, for mixing elimination in the C band. But a small but non zero chromatic dispersion around 1550 nanometers to limit both the effect of the chromatic dispersion and the four wave mixing. So, four wave mixing may also depend on channel spacing in the fiber nonlinear coefficient. So,、uh, fibers with increased fiber effective area or decreased nonlinear reflective index also reduce the four wave mixing efficiency. Or uneven channel spacing ensures that mixing products generated by three or more channels do not fall directly on the other channel element. This means simply、uh, in this figure, you place these signal waves unequally.、Uh, the probability of this generated small four wave light will coincide to other channels, but this design is very complicated. You, can, you have to avoid this generation of small waves、uh, from the signal channels. But,、uh, so, actually, this is a very complicated design. Normally, we use equally spaced double dim signals.、Okay. Uh, and this is the fiber more chromatic dispersion. This means that、uh, near the zero dispersion wavelength range, the f o r w a r d mixing will be、uh, significant. In particular, zero dispersion region, the f o r w a r d mixing can create a serious system impairment in multi channel systems. So, this is、uh, just an example of a measured result of a f o r w a r d mixing、uh, in a transmission distance about 1,000 kilometers. Uh, as I said, the four wave mixing light generation depends on the channel spacing. If channel spacing is so relatively large, the four wave mixing light is small. But if you reduce the channel spacing, the four wave mixing light is stronger. Actually, the original signal is only two signals this and this, and we don't input such a signal. But You see on the spectrum,、uh, other than this signal spectrum, you can see this whole wave mixing light. And this is the plot of a whole wave mixing power against the wavelength、uh, separation. So, as you can see, if we、uh, increase the signal space more than 0.8, whole wave mixing is weak. But if we reduce the channel space to、uh, 0.2 or so, The strong f o r w a r d mixing light can be、uh, observed. So、uh, we have to design the double dim signal channel spacing to place more than 0.8 nanometers or so. Okay.、Uh, this is、uh, another type of、uh, nonlinear effects,、uh, nonlinear phase noise.、Uh, nonlinear phase noise means just the interaction between the、uh, signal field and the noise field. And、uh, the result of interaction between the signal field and the noise field, you will see、uh, such a phase modulation by the noise. So, as a result of such a phase modulation, this is the original spectrum, signal spectrum. But as it increases the power or length, you will see such a、uh, scatter of the noise spectrum. This is actually phase noise induced spectrum. 
So the increased distance or power, this level will rise up. And finally, the signal level will be decreased and the noise level is so large. This is a problematic effect and uh, also in a transmission system, so-called nonlinear phase noise. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is just a design parameter of uh, nonlinear effect. So, uh, I, sh uh, I will stop the morning session here in front of this uh, slide. So, do you have any questions? Uh, so let's have a lunch time and uh, restart at two o'clock. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Describe the maximum power threshold due to nonlinear effects. First, was the type of fiber. So fibers has different nonlinear coefficients and dispersion coefficients. So very different behaviors regarding nonlinear effects. For example. Uh, dispersion compensation fibers or dispersion accommodation, accommodation of transmission line have a small effective area and consequently a large nonlinear coefficient. So typically, uh, even a 3 dBm or so SPM starts degrading system performance. Then for G.6525 fibers have a small nonlinear coefficient and SPM is in general negligible except at a very high optical power output power uh, input power region. For for example, eight dBm, so post compensation scheme and amplifier spacing of one hundred kilometers, SPM starts degrading degrading the ideal linear behavior. So high local dispersion makes XPM and FWM whole wave mixing effect quite negligible, assuming that the dispersion is exactly compensated. This means uh, that in G.6525, fiber, SPM is a bit problematic, but cross phase modulation and four wave mix mixing could be negligible because of this, uh, the fiber's large dispersion. And in terms of G.655 fibers, and uh, approximately the same behavior as G.6525, uh, so this also has a large dispersion values. And the second uh, scheme of dispersion compensation, as I described, we will need the dispersion compensation with G.652 fiber or G.55 fiber. Anyway, a large dispersion varies. So mainly uh, three schemes are considered uh, for dispersion compensation schemes. One is pre-compensation, second post-compensation, or post-compensation plus pre-chirping. That means uh, this dispersion compensator placed at the transmitter side or receiver side or uh, receiver side plus pre chirp means uh, something chirping uh, in the pulse. So pre uh, compensation method can be uh, placed, uh, device can be replaced at the beginning of the span. And uh, the scheme is strongly subject to SPM. So the maximum input power is, uh, for example, 4 dBm or a link length of 500 kilometers or so. Uh, instead, if we use post compensation scheme, uh, this compensation scheme just uh, device should be replaced at the receiver side. The maximum input power could be 13 dBm larger than this value for, hand, for the same conditions. And if we use post compensation plus pre chirping as post compensation, but at the beginning of the link, the pulse is pre chirped. This configuration is just uh, we will use post compensation at the receiver side. And pre chirping means uh, something to, uh, to have a pulse uh, chirping. So this optimum pre chirp value strongly reduces the SPM effect. That means uh, pre chirping can uh, open the eye opening of the signal pulse if you adequately settle the pre chirping value. And next one is span length. The maximum input power threshold due to nonlinear effects has different values for systems with different amplifier spacing. Well, for example, you, can, you saw uh, amplifier spacing 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers or 80 kilometers. 
So the influence of nonlinear effects depends on the optical power value. Of course, this is true. The optical input power decays according to an exponential row during propagation in the span due to five hours. This means that uh, optical power will be decreased according to the exponential row in a fiber of 100 kilometers or 50 kilometers anywhere the power decay. For example, uh, 500 kilometer link on G.6525 with post compensation and amplifier NF is 6 dB. Or oh, su such a case, the maximum input power is 13 dBm for span length 100 kilometers and 8 dBm for 15 kilometers. This is because uh, uh, 100 kilometers span has a uh, larger loss of signal power and 50 kilometers less uh, loss, loss in uh, signal power decrease in the fiber. So uh, in terms of uh, fiber nonlinearity, the 100 kilometers span is effective for uh, lower the optical signal power in the fiber. And so it is uh, impossible to pick out a single value for the maximum optical input power to achieve a Q factor greater than 7, that is BER is 10 to the power of minus 12. So I mean uh, this maximum input can be determined by uh, simulation or something like that. So you can't simply decide the how much power should be correct in the system. So recently uh, we can get uh, so-called computer simulation technology. And uh, you have to uh, use the computer simulation technology to calculate uh, fiber nonlinear effects uh, because the fiber nonlinear effects is a very, very complicated compared with the linear uh, effects. So uh, this is a concept of design of dispersion map. Dispersion map, as you see, in uh, such a sawtooth uh, shape of uh, dispersion uh, change along the, uh, along the distance. So this is called a, or dispersion management or dispersion map. So characteristic length means uh, some typical characteristic lengths have to be considered in the system. So one is nonlinear length, depends on the power. As the power increases, the nonlinear length could be short. And dispersion length could be uh, dispersion if large, the dispersion length uh, will be reduced. And the walk of length also depends on the dispersion value. This value also shortened if dispersion is so large. And uh, two parties could be input in the optical fiber with the channel spacing of delta lambda, and the pulse width is, is T0. In such a case, uh, this, uh, such a characteristic length can be determined. And uh, using such a characteristic length, we can estimate the dispersion management. Management means the uh, amount of dispersion or length of fiber. This square, area of square, means uh, accumulated dispersion because this is a dispersion coefficient um, multiplied by the length. So this is a so-called alternate frequency of dispersion. And for example, this is uh, uh, even uh, alternate dispersion, but this is not perfectly compensating. So we will need some additional compensation at uh, unit dispersion management section. Maybe this is about, for example, 500 kilometers or so, and we will need additional dispersion compensation. So this is an uh, uh, example of a dispersion accommodation or compensation. So uh, reduction, uh, reducing the impairment due to fiber nonlinearity in the dispersion. So waveform distortion could be caused by SPM plus GVD. So we need small GVD. But interchannel interaction, XPM or four wave mixing and GVD could be caused by a small GVD. So we have to, we need a large dispersion value. So this is just a compromise between the design, small GVD and large GVD. But we can settle this problem by using this dispersion compensation. So locally, we will use some large dispersion. But in total, uh, the dispersion value could be zero. So uh, uh, this local large dispersion value can meet this demand, large dispersion. And this overall dispersion could be zero, 
can be can uh, match this small GVD requirements. But uh, as I uh, described in the morning session, the such GVD compensation scheme can only be effective for only one position of wavelength, center wavelength also. And any other wavelength channel can incur some accumulation of dispersion because this is, is uh, I, as I said, the GVD slope for higher order dispersion cannot be compensated. So this slope or difference between the signal channel can be accumulated along the distance. This is problematic. This, because uh, this small GVD mm -hmm. condition cannot be met in such a technique. So again, uh, this is just an example of uh, so, uh, so-called higher order fiber dispersion management. In this case, you can compensate second order dispersion for uh, the same value for all the signal wavelengths. So the previous figure, the dispersion value at this point is different for the center wavelengths, longer, shorter wavelengths. This is because this kind of fiber can have a, not only second order, order dispersion or GVD, but higher order GVD or third order dispersion as like. So both type of dispersion, for those, both type of dispersion values, this management can be, uh, can eliminate both type of dispersion. So this is an example of dispersion management system. Okay, so uh, another uh, topics uh, we will enter that's forward error correction, but I don't need to describe so detail because uh, yesterday you have learned much about the forward error correction techniques. So uh, this is some duplication with the chapter six, okay? But uh, briefly review. So forward error correcting, forward error correcting is an important way of course improving the performance of large capacity long for optical transmission systems. So with the use of forward error correction system design can accept relatively large VR much more than 10 to the power of minus 12 in the optical transmission line. For example, 10 to the power of uh, 10 to the power of minus 4 as you saw in the previous uh, slides in chapter 6. So uh, also fake application may allow the optical, uh, optical parameters to be significantly relaxed and encourage the construction of large capacity long haul optical transmission system in a cost effective manner. So FEC has been proven to be effective in OSNR limited systems as well as in dispersion limited systems for, for non effects reducing the out of the power leads to OSNR limitations. So we usually use FEC to reduce the optical out power to avoid the fiber non effect, but reducing uh, optical power causes OSNR degradation, so BER to be worse. In such a case, forward error correction is very effective. Uh, this table, is, you may also uh, so so uh, yesterday, okay, is in band effect and out of band effect used for SDH OTN and the coding gain, for example, 3.8. And in the case of in band effect, net coding gain is also the same as the coding gain, but out of band effect, uh, coding gain is 5.9 dB, but net coding gain could be small slightly, yeah? Code rate is one, but this out of effect is 239 slash 255. So the uh, such kind of effect uh, use uh, uh, relax uh, component parameters or transmitter in the receiver. And there are many parameters which could benefit from uh, forward direction. Such uh, kinds of issues are uh, described in the chapter six framework. So then, uh, reduction of output power levels by forward error correction. So to save pump power, that means the reduced OSN at the end of uh, optical amplifier chain causes higher electrical noise, but the higher BER is compensated by forward error correction. 
And in a single response system limited by receiver electrical noise, a transmit out power can be saved by forward election correction. That means uh, you can decrease the transmit power from the uh, transmitter, and the lower power will cause uh, lower bit error, uh, sorry, worse bit error rate at the receiver. But worse bit error rate can be acceptable by using forward error correction. Or to avoid nonlinearity, actually fiber nonlinearity can be significant as you increase the signal uh, out imp fiber input power. So uh, a system with a limited optical power by nonlinear effects has a limited OSNL. But after the power level that decreased the multi-channel system parameter, and for G.6.5.2 or 6.5.5 can also be applied to G.6.5.3. That's a common system specification becomes possible for all the fiber types. That means, uh, uh, as I said, the G.6.5.2 or 6.5.5 five, type fiber are effective for, uh, uh, for nonlinear effects. But if you decrease the signal power, Fiber nonlinearity can be negligible, so you can use not only this type of fiber, this type of 653 fiber can be used. So, uh, increasing the availability of a type of optical fiber. And uh, this means the increase in maximum span attenuation or number of amplifier by forward error correction. So, maximum span attenuation. Actually, uh, the multi span system, the chromatic dispersion limited, uh, not limited, but uh, with dispersion, uh, using a dispersion accommodation technique, in, for example, in 653 or 6555, target span distance can be extended. So this, is, uh, this means a forward error correction can, be, can extend the uh, span distance. And uh, the input power of each line amplifier can be decreased by the amount of the net coating gain. That's uh, 3 dB, 4 dB uh, power level can be uh, decreased by forward error correction. And also the maximum span attenuation can be increased by the amount of the net coating gain, maximum gain. Uh, that means uh, you can uh, increase the loss because uh, uh, SNL degradation by this loss increase can be compensated by the forward error correction. And also relaxation uh, may eliminate unnecessary repeaters in a system with a slightly larger loss than the specified. That means uh, if you have an 80 kilometer system, but uh, if you use adopt the system forward error correction, you can uh, uh, have a longer repeater spacing, for example, uh, 20. 80 kilometers to 100 kilometers, so the, you can eliminate unnecessary, num, uh, number, unnecessary repeaters from the system. And the number of spans also the same thing. The total target distance of a long haul system can be extended enormously by increasing the number of spans. For example, 10 spans, if you have a 10 span system, but uh, increasing uh, 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 margin of the SNR, uh, that means uh, uh, you can tolerate more noise or SNR degradation, so you can uh, extend your system from 10 span to 12 or 15 span by using forward error correction. This is uh, also the case that if you once install your system without forward error correction, but after that you would like to extend the system, so then if you use forward error correction, you can easily extend your system. Otherwise, you can't extend the system because uh, this system can be limited by the SNR limitation. As the, uh, in how increase can be uh, determined by a factor given by the not net coding gain. Uh, typically, uh, that as you see, uh, less than 6 dB, uh, 5.3 dB, 5.6 dB, I don't remember, but anyway, this value. So in the case of standard out of Outbound effect, the target distance may be increased by a factor of almost four. Four means six dB, almost six dB, so four. So then, uh, so any questions about uh, nonlinear effects and uh, forward error correction? You may know much about the forward error correction through the yesterday chapter six lecture, okay? 
So uh, we left uh, only <laughs> a few parts of chapter 7 now. <laughs> okay? And this is a reliability requirement issue. Okay? Uh, in this uh, uh, handbook, the reliability issues are mainly focused to the submarine systems. But this uh, reliability issue, of course, uh, can be applied to a terrestrial system or other systems. Okay? And the reliability requirements. Reliability is defined as a probability or component or subsystem to perform a required function under specific conditions or a given period of time. Just uh, reliability is uh, in a period of lifetime, how many trouble will occur in that system? So uh, there are so, uh, some uh, parameters to express such a reliability issue. Uh, most famous one is the failure rate fit failure in time. This means uh, uh, one fit means uh, 10 to the power of minus 9 probability to, fall, uh, to fail during one hour of operation. Okay. Uh, this means, uh, in other words, uh, only one failure at the, at the time period of 10 to the power of 9 hours. Okay. Can you imagine how long time is 10 to the power of 9? The question is, uh, how many hours in a year? Can you answer quickly? <laughs> how many hours in a year? One year is how many hours? A day, 24 hours a day. And we have 36, uh, 365 days. So answer is? Uh, very complicated, but you should remember. You should remember such a typical value, OK? Yes, uh, 8,000. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you should, uh, should you, if you consider about the reliability issue, you should remember some typical value. How many hours a year? 8,000 or so. Or you can remember roughly 10,000 10, hours per year. So 10,000 uh, 10, means 10 to the power of 4. So how about the 10? Uh, 10 to the power of 9, 10 to the, uh, 10 to the power of 5 times a year. How long? About 100,000 years. Uh, sorry? 10 to the power of 5 years. 10,000? I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sometimes confused. <laughs> How, how many years? 10 to the power of 5 years. Maybe 100,000 years. So very long time. <laughs> okay, actually uh, this fit means uh, uh, only one fail during uh, 100,000 years. Okay? or probability 10 to the power of minus 9 during a one-hour operation. And of course, this value tends to be temperature dependent and it has to be recorded as the operating temperature. So uh, failure rate of the device depends on the uh, temperature. Some device will be weak at the uh, cold place, or some device will be weak at uh, higher temperature of 60, 70 degrees. <laughs> So then, uh, mean time between failures. Mean time between failures means the expected time between two consecutive failures. So you will have some trouble today, and yesterday you will have time. In such a case, mean time between failures is one day. Okay? And mean time to repair, expected time needed to repair failure. That means uh, if your computer broken, you take a time, for example, one hour to repair your computer. In this case, you say mean time to repair is one hour. Okay, repair time, one hour, uh, MTTR. And the outage is defined as this is a, a wrong. Actually, MTTR, MTTR slash MT, MTB plus MTTR, or in other words, 
as total time minus outage time uh, divided by total time. Uh, this is uh, almost the same meaning. Out, uh, this is a network availability or availability of, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm confused. Outage is just simple MTBS, uh, MTTR slash MTBS. This is the uh, ratio of uh, failure time, so you can't use something and uh, between the failures, MTBS. So amount of time usually express, expressed in minutes per year when the network is not available to perform its function. So this is the network availability is the total time minus outage time slash total time. Okay, really simple definition. Uh, this is just example of MTBF, MTTR, and availability. Okay, uh, this graph shows in hours the start of time and this is end of time, 600 hours. So during this 600 years, you will see uh, one, two, three times failure in the system. And this is the F means failure and R means the recovery, okay? So the, after 160 hours, you see one error, but this error was fixed uh, within one hour. And then next 149 hours passed, you see the second error. So, uh, but this time you, take, you took repair time two hours, okay? This is time to repair. And this means time between failure, okay? And uh, you will see the third, third failure here. And in total, 600 hours. So MTBF calculation, mean time between failure. Mean means just the average of this uh, time between failure. So uh, you can calculate MTBF in unit of power. Uh, simply uh, add this time and this time, this time and this time period. And divide it for time and you can get 149 hours as MTBF value of this system. And then MTTR, mean time to repair. So you took uh, one hour, two hour, and one hour, three times, or three times failure uh, repair. So this, uh, this means that MTTR is the average time. So one plus two plus one divided three times. That means uh, four slash three hours. So availability means just, uh, uh, there could be uh, some different definitions, but uh, almost the same one, but in, I show you a set, two cases. That availability is uh, MTBF plus MTTR, and this divided, uh, divided by MTT, MTBF plus MTTR, MTBF divided by. So this case, uh, the calculation is uh, this uh, MTBF value divided by MTBF plus MTTR. So uh, this availability is almost 99% or so. Another definition is just total time minus outage slash total time. is uh, almost the same value, 99% or so. So you can see uh, uh, maybe uh, this MTBF or MTTR calculation is very easy. Uh, sometimes it used uh, but uh, you should remember that this value, what does this value mean? So someone say MTBF is uh, 10 years or uh, five years of the system, okay? So failure rate analysis, uh, this is <laughs> again the, uh, many uh, uh, sentences, but uh, you, you may see this next figures, so for uh, failure rate curve, okay? You may see this figure. Uh, this figure means uh, the failure rate curve includes uh, three periods, three kinds of period, period. One is infant mortality. Second one is random failure period. This is a so long time period. And this is uh, phase three is aging time. So uh, this is the uh, beginning of the system lifetime. And this is uh, so normally uh, operated range of time. And you will see this uh, so-called uh, older, getting older, aging time period. Okay, this is a system drive time. 
sorry. And uh, this uh, three kinds of uh, time period for a failure analysis. So infant mortality at the beginning of unit of components used in the system exhibit a high failure rate and it is decreasing with them as you see this curve at the beginning of the system, uh, system lifetime, you will see such a decreased curve. And this short period is called the infant mortality time. So infant mortality time may be usually one or two years, one or two years. Okay? So you, when you buy a car or TV or something like that, uh, I think most case the uh, compensation for uh, trouble or something like this, uh, only one year or so, okay? Normally one year or so. So one year guarantee is normal in, uh, in the case of a car or electric uh, or computer or something like that. So this, is, this means just this infant mortality period. And it is mainly uh, due to a non-ideal manufacturing, manufacturing process, uh, for example, defective raw materials or improper operations or con contaminated environment or power such as something like that. So many factors can uh, generate some such infant mortality. mortality okay? the, uh, the single device, each single device will either fail or pass the test but uh, the failure rate of a number of units will flow a decreasing curve over time. And in particular, for submerged equipment, the qualification process attempts to avoid the mortality. This means that for a submarine system that uh, requires uh, reliability very high, so they do a very severe qualification process, okay? And the second one is uh, random failure. The period next to the infant mortality is characterized by a low failure rate, uh, as you can see, this one, this period. And this period is called the uh, useful life because the failure rate is almost constant, constant until the beginning of the last phase uh, wear out period. So uh, while the failure rate is constant, failures occur randomly, just randomly, and uh, gen generally uh, not detected even with high control process. Th this is just randomly and can't predict. Yeah? V very stable period okay, of the system operation. And finally, uh, aging period. The last period occurs when systems and associated components begin to wear out during use, uh, same as a human being. And in the you are all getting old, so, so many troubles. <laughs> So the last period, so the failures may result from aging, material fatigue, excessive wear out, environmental corrosion, 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 sorry, undesirable environment or accumulative damage. Uh, maybe in the case of a car, you, uh, if you use car 10 years or so, 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 so many parts of a car are wear out, so uh, you have to replace any tires or something like that. But even so, uh, you can, you have to give up to use your card after 15 or 20 years, so all the cards, okay? And this is just, I described the three period of uh, era card. And uh, also chapter seven describes uh, for the submerged section and reliability, this is tend to the, uh, this is intention for the optical submarine cable system. As you can see, uh, the optical submarine cable system is composed of a so-called uh, submarine section under the water, under the sea, and terrestrial parts. This, is, this could be going to the city area or so. This could be uh, in the sea, at, uh, under the sea. So as you can see clearly, the submerged section is more critical than the land section of a submarine mm -hmm. system in terms of reliability because MTTR is greater. This is that typical MTTR value gives around two weeks. <coughs> Why so long? You have to use uh, uh, intervention of a cable ship. So you can't uh, go to fix this submarine repeater. Uh, by walking or swimming or something like that, it's very difficult. So you have to uh, use a cable ship. It's a very expensive cable ship. If you use a cable ship, very expensive. 
And the cable ships are not so many in, in the world, so you have to wait for uh, one week or two weeks uh, for the repair of the cable, submarine cable damage. And uh, on the other hand, uh, two hours or so for the land section, you can go to the car, you, you can go to the site by car easily. Maybe two hours or so, you can fix the problem, okay? But submerged section, you, you can go to your car in, uh, inside the sea, okay? <laughs> so low failure rates are obtained through the use of heavily screening components, cross control of raw material drops, and simple design careful management process and throughout quality control. That means the submarine holds the submerged system portion. There are so strict screening or qualification of components are done. And the test condition is required to accelerate the time to failure in prediction, predictable and un, under that means uh, 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 the device has to be checked with a severe environment to uh, find any trouble soon, uh, quickly. So uh, for both economical uh, purpose and the technical feasibility, the reliability requirements make necessary the use of accelerated test. This means accelerated test can find uh, any troubles quickly. So, for the required reliability and to reduce the according uh, error rate of the subsystems, uh, it could be useful to redundant configurations. Redundant pump rate configuration are useful in order to ensure that the amplifier reliability target is met. Be this, because, uh, this is because that basically we need only one pump laser for the LBM opt optical amplifier, but it could be useful for two uh, redundant configuration of a pump laser in one EDFA. So if one, is, one can be damaged, but the other can back up the power of pump power in the repeater. Uh, the submarine repeaters. Actually, uh, this is the actual photo of uh, installation of the submarine cable system. So I took this maybe more than 10 years ago. I was involved in the development of submarine cable systems and I actually uh, uh, developed this uh, submarine cable repeaters using optical amplifier technology. And this texture, uh, picture taken at the installation uh, instance of installation. This is so-called submarine cable. And typically, this lay, in this system, this length is 100 kilometers. So each 100 kilometers, you will have such a repeater. The size of the repeater is maybe a three meters or so from here to here. Yeah? The weight about 4 kilogram, 400 kilograms or so, 300, 400, or even 500 kilometers, depending on the system very uh, expensive and very heavy uh, repeater. <laughs> because this repeater has to be installed under the water, maybe uh, in place, depending on the place, about uh, 8,000 meters or, uh, or even uh, 10,000 meters in so deep sea, okay? 1,000 pressure, 1,000 times uh, stronger pressure than air. So external fault means uh, uh, some damage, not uh, system itself, but external damage can be uh, made by uh, someone in the cable sections in submarine system. The main causes of failure in submarine cable systems are aggregations, such as bottom fishing, fishing trolls, ocean currents, geological events, earthquakes, and uh, volcanoes. Nearly 90% of the failures are caused by fishing activities and damage from ship anchors. So the wet plant can be buried in the shallow water except in rocky areas where seabed conditions don't allow barrier. The cable route is select, selected to avoid as much as possible geological hazards. That means uh, normally submarine cable system is very stable, but only uh, damage can be mostly uh, damaged by uh, fishing activities. Me, you mean uh, trolling, uh, trolling of, uh, the fisherman can troll the uh, net to, for some, to get some fishes, but simultaneously, sometimes they pick up submarine cable, 
submarine cable. And the submarine cable system can be damaged by such a picking up by the fisherman. Uh, almost all the cases, the fishermen uh, pick up the cable with the fishes with a, uh, 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 with a net, but sometimes they uh, just escape to throw the cable, damaged cable, so they don't compensate for anything. <laughs> and in case of Hera in the submerged, sorry? Okay. Excuse me. Okay, thanks. This repeater is active or passive? This repeater is active or passive? Oh. Of course, this uh, repeater contains the optical amplifiers, so this is active. Okay, uh, the active equipment needs the power, electrical power. Sorry? How you, you connect it on the electrical power? Ah, uh, how connect the optical fiber to, to this uh, repeater? O optical, no, electrical power, not the optical power. Ah, okay, okay, I see. <laughs> Sorry, simple. Uh, some of them, uh, as I said, uh, some of you uh, not uh, in the country are uh, not facing the sea, and uh, you can't imagine this. this. Okay. Uh, submarine cable system, uh, submarine cable has, uh, uh, of course, optical fiber cable at the center of the cable, okay? But uh, uh, some metal, like uh, copper, copper is, uh, surrounded, is uh, surrounding this optical fiber area. Like uh, in the center of the cable, you have uh, some maybe eight, 16 or more fibers, optical fibers. And, uh, to cover the optical fibers, uh, you will see uh, copper or something uh, anyway uh, to, uh, for current uh, supply, okay? And uh, then uh, you will have some uh, protection, armored cables, so-called armored protection for many uh, very thick wires or something like this, cover the cable. So uh, you can uh, supply uh, current from this uh, terrestrial supply system to here, to here, here. The current uh, normally one ampere, one ampere so uh, for the typical submarine cable system now one ampere. One ampere is a very large current, okay? And the voltage, between this uh, system is uh, roughly speaking 1,000 volts for 1,000 kilometer system. So uh, in the case of Trans-Pacific system, nearly 10,000 kilometers uh, from USA to Japan, you have to supply, uh, you have to have uh, supply equipment of almost 10,000 uh, 10, volts, really high voltage and really dangerous system. If you touch the cable directly, of course, cable is uh, covered by something, so it's not uh, dangerous, but the cable is uh, cut it or something like, and you will have the voltage applying the cable, and you touch, you can die soon, quickly. <laughs> okay. 10,000 voltage, and one ampere current to your body, you can't live ne anymore, okay? Almost the same. Uh, energy as the thunderbolt. Okay. So, okay. Do you have a summary documentation on the, on the power system of this system? Power system is what? Do you have a summary documentation? Communication? Document. Ah, document. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, because uh, do you see uh, in your handbook a uh, no mm, question that I can accept? Okay, no? So my uh, part of uh, this tutorial uh, finished now. So uh, I'd like to say thank you very much for all for your attentions. 
And uh, tomorrow morning, Giancarlo start uh, chapter eight, uh, eight, and succeeding nine, ten. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.